Our next guest, uh, African farmer Mogaji uh, well, he is going to help us uh, unpack the a strategy of the federal government to crash food prices uh, in the country. Of course, we know that recently the federal government did release or order the release of grains from the strategic reserves. Uh, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'd just like to get your thoughts, uh, the, the response to the, by the federal government to the soaring uh, food prices uh, in the country. And the strategy right now is to release uh, about uh, more than 102,000 uh, metric tons of various grains uh, from the reserves. And they're also, we hear that they're also in talks with uh, rice millers in the country to also uh, boost rice supply. What are your thoughts in terms of how the, the strength of the strategy? Um, well, it's not a strategy uh, because grains are not just what we eat. Grains is a part of it. So um, releasing 102,000 metric tons really doesn't solve anything. And when we're talking about releasing grains, um, grains should be released to millers. Okay, the last one that was released uh, got to farmers two bags of corn. What do they do with that? They sell it again. So that's not a sustainable strategy. Uh, to begin to release grains. The grains, if they release the grains and the grains are milled into like corn meal, um, into like millet meal, you know, where you can make food, then it's a different ball game. But currently that strategy uh, is not sustainable. However, it's commendable. Well, the federal government did say uh, through the Ministry of Agriculture that this was a short-term measure uh, to help crash prices. And uh, it's also been said that... Um, there might be the importation of additional commodities also in the short term to boost the supply. Uh, what we've heard is, you know, in a, a couple of weeks, but you do make a good point there because what happens uh, when in the next couple of weeks when the foods or the grains that have been released, when they run out, then what do we do? So I guess the question is, what do we plan to do uh, in that short time, that time that we're trying to buy us some time, that window? Uh, what uh, do the federal authorities need to do uh, to boost supply? Uh, I mean, if that's even possible. Well, the government needs to, you know, take hard decisions. And the hard decision is that um, then there's going to be some rough road ahead of us. And I would say this. These decisions of releasing grains ought to have happened prior to now. If they released it earlier, that means that they are, or are abreast with you know, the intricacies of the agri space in Nigeria. So what needs to happen now is to come to the people and let the people know that we can't perform any magic. However, we are doing one, two, three. I can tell you that the grains would be exhausted very soon, okay? So when it's exhausted, what happens? So, you know, and, and also, um, we seem to be focused a lot on today and now and short term. Now, May, June, July. What is coming in May, June, July may come as a shock. And when it shows up, there will be nothing government can do about it. We have been warning and warning and warning. It seems that they're not paying attention. They don't have an idea of what's going to happen, especially to Southwest. What is happening to the northern part of the country is what is triggering this uh, fire brigade uh, approach. But what will happen to Southwest from May is something that you know, I hope will be averted. But right now, government needs to put their hands into a lot of production now, because on the short term, if they have to import grains. That's the truth. They have mm. to import grains. If, if I grains. could just come in here, I, do, uh, I beg your pardon. Could you just help us understand, when you say uh, what's going to happen in the Southwest uh, from May or between May and June, could you just help us understand well, what you mean by that? So I, I, won't, I won't put the details out. Um, I will reach out to the highest of the highest of the political uh, senior uh, uh, politicians. They're not paying attention yet. But let me say this. In the South, we eat more fresh than grains. If you release the grains to the North, yes, they will eat it. OK? It, it solves the problem. In the South, it is fresh. And we have to produce. And it takes a lot of technical skills to produce. And we have by February 20th to take a decision. If implementation does not start, 
almost every food will be scarce. From corn, tomatoes, peppers, yams, name it. Everything that is coming to the southwest will be scarce. And at that time, after February 20, 2024, they may not be able to do anything about it, but just to you know, try and quench the fires. And at that time, you can't quench the fires. Are, are you referring to logistics uh, challenges <laughs> in moving food? I, I'm, I'm referring to the availability of what will be transported in the logistics. It will not be available. And it, it always is not available around that time. But this year, food normally would go up by 200% from May, June. It's already 200%. So we're looking, just to put it in perspective, we're looking at a basket of tomato, 50 kg, based on the current currency and Naira and pricing, hitting 80 to 100,000 for a basket. The projections have been right in the last maybe 10, 15 years, and I hope that they are really preparing for this, but I'm not seeing the team taking the right decisions. They may mean well, but the strategy is not appropriate. The foods will not be available, except they take a decision before 20th. That's a few days from now. And we've been reaching out, but they are not listening. Right, uh, if we're going straight to the, I mean, where the, the pain point areas, the food, the northern part, the food producing northern part of the country and the food belt also. Uh, what we hear often, almost on a daily basis, is uh, insurgency uh, that has led to the displacement of many farmers, uh, et cetera. Is that just a problem? Uh, are there additional uh, factors, perhaps weather, uh, adverse weather effects uh, impacting on food, uh, on food production, et cetera? Help us understand. Give us a, a, a good sense of exactly what is happening. So you see, um, insurgency is a component. Uh, climate change, bad weather is a component. We may not have control over that. We have control over other things. You know, the biggest of the strategy, as far as we're seeing implementation and talks, the direction is going, we're still focusing on the north that is heavily challenged with insurgency, uh, kidnapping, name it. Every, every negative index is towards the north. The southern part of the country is where the focus should be now. To be able to, you know, raise uh, production to a higher level, to increase productivity such that if there's a climate change, I've said this, Europe, the whole of Europe in the last two years have had unprecedented heat waves and they've not been able to move foods uh, across those countries. If we have a disease outbreak in the north this year, if we have droughts this year, the whole country will be in chaos. Right now, it's still north, not north. Foods will need, at some point in time before 18 months, foods may need to be moved from south. When I say south, I mean almost any part in the south, but specifically southwest, to the northern part of the country. But the, the conversations now and the strategy, the plan we are seeing is not paying attention to the south. Now, the politicians today need to pay attention to this one thing. It's not about the president coming from Southwest. It's about Nigeria's food security, which is the security that Southwest must step in now by virtue of the challenges looming in the North. Niger states that said um, food, that the governor said food should not move out. It didn't start now. I know of, a, of an FMCG that owns 25,000 acres, and they've abandoned that land they were cultivating every year. They have abandoned it for about five years now. So insurgency has made North Central also fairly handicapped. The next region that can step into that gap is Southwest. But I think the politicians are trying to you know, balance things so that opponents will not take advantage of that. But we're, we're looking at something that's really going to be challenging our head if they don't take uh, fast actions. All right, uh, just on a final note, uh, what about, I mean, business owners, uh, uh, not just farmers, uh, talking about here in, in the southwest. Uh, you know, you go to supermarkets, you go to the open markets, you know, prices of things have all gone up. But we know that we're hearing uh, conversations such as the poultry farmers, the bakers, uh, you know, all experiencing a high cost of food items. Uh, is, there a, is there a point where we may see a pullback if the strategy uh, is, if the, strategy, if the right strategy uh, is put in place and we're able to see some 
uh, pullback? Is that even on the, on the horizon? Yes. If, if the right strategies uh, are implemented, it will still take about two and a half months to feel the effects. Uh, that's the truth. However, government needs to be you know, embracing private sector that already have some infrastructure facilities that either is dormant you know, or underutilized, maybe because of the insurgency, the price hikes of MPO that is affecting many of them. Most importantly, government needs to engage the religious institutions now you know, to say, come on board, we have these facilities. Would you leverage it to be able to take care of this shortage right. of food or potential shortage of food? Just like in time past where uh, missionaries came to Nigeria, government played a crucial role by ensuring they had lands to give us education and to give us health. The religious institutions now, the government need to partner with them or collaborate with them right. to leverage to make Nigeria food secure. Well, Amos, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for talking to us, giving us uh, just a better sense and perspective on where we are in terms of where these challenges are emanating from. I've been speaking to African farmer Amogaji, a team lead at NG, looking at, of course, Nigeria's uh, food uh, crisis. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with the rest of the show. Do join us again. Mm -hmm.